Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. So were Labour right to impose inheritance tax on farms? And which of the farmers' arguments are valid and which are just cover for the very wealthy non-farmers who are actually driving the protest? But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So what I'm going to do here is set out the various arguments for and against the inheritance tax on farms, but also the specific way it was applied by the government, because Rachel Reeves could have chosen to be harsher, but she could also have chosen a less politically controversial way of applying it, and unlike some of the other controversial measures, still would have raised the same amount of money. So anyway, what are the basic facts? Well, farmers have tried to frame this around the idea of farming families being allowed to carry on farming, that the official value of their land and assets is very high, but that the money they make off the land is very low. That would be too expensive to pay the inheritance tax, and so those inheritance, inheriting the farms would actually be forced to sell them. The government, when it comes to it, tax lawyers, who are the actual experts on this, bear in mind, like farmers are the least expert on inheritance tax because they've never paid it. So the actual experts, remember, are tax lawyers. They have said relatively few farms would actually be affected. Farmers have complained that the Treasury have based the number of farms affected on who applied for agricultural property relief alone, when they should have also accounted for those farms claiming business property relief as well. This seems a fair point to me. It may indeed be that the number of farms affected is greater than the Treasury is claiming. However, there have been some misleading statements by farmers as well. First of all, many are trying to claim that any farm worth over a million pounds is going to get hit. No, as long as they're not stupid, when passing the farm down, the estate would have to be worth about £3 million before any inheritance tax is due. And when the inheritance tax is due, it's due on the extra. And it's half the normal rate. It's 20% instead of 40%. And they get 10 years to pay it back, interest-free. I've also seen suggestions that some farmers have estates worth millions, but they're making less than the minimum wage themselves. Bullshit, by the way. But let's take the case of some farmers who genuinely only make a small return, let's say about 1% on their assets, as is claimed by the NFU. 1%? I get more than that in my savings account. Sell the land, put the money into savings accounts, then go and work at McDonald's, you'll make way more money. Because although I think the government should have done this differently, and most farmers would have been fine with the alternative, which I'll go over at the end, I'm going to say there are some terrible arguments emerging. Like, first of all, I'll tell you what it looks like to me. So the Tories implemented a hard Brexit, which strangles supply chains, making some agricultural products more expensive for farmers. Energy, definitely a lot more expensive. Cut off easy access to seasonal farm labour, made it much harder to export their produce. Like, there was a cheese competition in Europe last week. The UK couldn't enter any cheeses because they couldn't get across the Brexit border. Well, British farmers have this all the time. So you'd think they'd be pissed off with raising trade barriers with their continental market, wouldn't you? I keep being told, stop saying farmers supported Brexit. Only the big landowning fake farmers did that. What, you mean like the ones protesting against inheritance tax now? But what happened after Brexit? What did farmers do? They drove six tractors down a road in London. Nobody noticed because tractors are allowed to drive on roads. But when Jeremy Clarkson, who admitted to buying a farm to dodge inheritance tax, suddenly has his kids facing inheritance tax on land they won't be farming themselves and his income they didn't earn, all of a sudden farmers descend on London in force. Oh, and people are posting photos of farming protests that are clearly in other countries to make it seem that the protest is more impressive than it actually is. So basically, farmers aren't really coming across as credible to me at all. That being said, just because people make crap arguments doesn't mean they can't have a point. Because there are some other things to consider as well. There are some saying, why should farmers be exempt from inheritance tax? They're getting a 50% reduction, an extra million pounds relief on top of all the other forms of relief. And they're making out like it's the end of the world. But as I've mentioned before, my attitude to land's a little bit different. In fact, if I could lead tax reforms, I'd actually massively scale back inheritance tax and focus on land tax. And when I've discussed this in the past, I've said the beauty of land tax is that the super rich can't hide it in the Cayman Islands and you can set the rate according to the use of land. In fact, one big area where I think Reeves definitely messed up, she didn't touch the grouse moors. Bollocks to the heritage assets tax break. A grouse moor is not heritage. It's a bigger and more destructive waste of land than a golf course. So they should have been clobbered. 
and at the full rate, none of this 20% nonsense, if aristocrats can't afford the inheritance tax, sell it and piss off. Farms are useful, grouse moors and all. But I am with farmers in one respect. We already don't produce enough food and we shouldn't be so quick to rely on imports as climate change ravages the world especially. And if a farming family has to sell the land, I mean, if it was definitely going to be used for farmland as well, I don't really care who farms it, but it might not. It might be bought for development. In fact, some farmland is. That being said, I also refuse to countenance any argument that suggests farmers should be allowed to work for less than the minimum wage, as some are claiming, or that they should continue farming the land into their 70s and 80s. Pass it on to your kids sooner. Remember, you pay no inheritance tax as long as you pass it on and then stay alive for another seven years. If you pass it on in your 60s, there's a very good chance no inheritance tax is due anyway. Because I refuse to back the idea of tax cuts in order to exploit the elderly. Shouldn't be doing physical labour in your 70s. If you must work, go work in a library. Have we got any left? Actually, I'm not sure about that. But could Reeves have done this differently? Yes. So let's think about the primary reason for the change. It's not because Reeves is pissed off at farmers. It's because she's pissed off at tax avoidance. Like, I am absolutely fine with the idea of genuine farms getting tax. You know, farmer Joyles, he could have his inheritance tax relief. No problem with that. The problem is that half of all farmland bought last year was bought by investors looking to dodge tax. When you look at the biggest areas of what is classed as farmland, the owner doesn't farm the land at all. It's a fiddle. It's right that that be stopped. But like I said, I have no objection to tax breaks for genuine farms and genuine farmers. Apart from anything else, many do get screwed by supermarkets demanding prices that are too low. Mind you, that is another reason why they should never have supported leaving the single market. Sorry, but the bulk of farmers will never not be idiots in my eyes from now on. Apologies to those who understood how their own marketplace worked. But anyway, the point was to stop investors buying up farmland as a tax dodge, which ironically raises the value of the land and is responsible for why farming estates are high in value but low in profits. These farmers complain, oh, but the, you know, my, my land's worth this amount of money, but I don't make much of it. Why is it worth that much? Why is it considered that valuable? Because rich arseholes who live in Singapore are buying up acres of it, and you're standing shoulder to shoulder with them. In fact, farmers should not be standing with the rich arseholes who've caused the government to adopt this policy in the first place. But the way I look at it, because inheritance tax is still at half the rate, I'm still looking at it and thinking, okay, I can get how investors are now pissed off, which is why they're creating such a stink. But will they still see buying farmland as a good way to dodge tax? It's still half the rate and you get 10 years to pay it back tax free. They just don't get to dodge as much tax as before. You know, but someone had another proposal. They said, well, instead of 20% above a million pound relief, why not make it 30% above 5 million pounds, which would work out at the same money? You know, and again, remember, you still get this other roughly two million worth of tax relief if you're not an idiot. That would definitely mean genuine family farms don't get hit, right? Now, it's not perfect because it would also mean Jeremy Clarkson's kids get away with it as well, which I'm not happy about. But if you're going to be practical, it reduces the benefit for billionaires to buy up lots of land and it would have avoided this political shitstorm. But I'd have gone further why not 30% on estates over 5 million and the full 40% over 10 million? Oh, and abolish that heritage bollocks on grouse moors? I mean, I would still prefer the French system where they can actually tell the difference between a genuine farmer and a townie with a load of money. But the other suggestion would have been simple, have raised just as much money, maybe a little bit more, and not pissed off all that many farmers. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.